Hello, Michelle Foster Earl with Omnishore here, and I thought I would just go over some of our uh, statistics. These are all pre-claim uh, statistics. So um, a lot of what we do is answer helpline calls uh, to support the policyholders to help avoid a claim. And I thought it'd just be interesting to look at Omnishore by the numbers comparing 2020 to 2021. So first thing uh, to notice is that utilization of the helpline continues to grow over time. So each year we seem to have more and more people interested in reaching out for uh, confidential advice on demand uh, by a third party. So we are not owned by any insurance organizations and that I think uh, helps the policyholders feel comfortable that they're getting uh, independent and uh, confidential advice. So uh, you will notice that in 2020, we had a huge spike in the helpline utilization. In fact, we had more calls in 2020 than we had in the three years combined uh, prior. So 1,475, that was a high frequency utilization year. And then in 2021, notice that the numbers went down a little bit, but uh, they still, if you look at the graph in, in whole, are trending upwards. And so uh, I will say the interesting thing about 2021 is that while uh, the frequency of the calls were down, the severity of the calls were up. In fact, uh, one in seven of those calls were classified by the policyholders as urgent, meaning they needed real-time assistance with an issue in order to avoid a lawsuit, a claim, or a problem. And, um, and we actually spent more time servicing those uh, helpline calls. So number of calls goes down, but urgency and time spent on those calls went up. So here's our kind of by the numbers for 2020. Um, as you may know, we answer our helpline uh, live 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was actually the most popular social media post that we did in 2020. Um, and then we, by our calculations, uh, saved our partners an approximate and conservative $15.5 million in prevented claims. Where do we get that number, you ask? Well, the Ashram Aon benchmarking study uh, in 2020 had the average claims cost for multiple types of claims. And we just took the frequency leader, which 41% uh, of all claims uh, fell into that bucket. And it was $170,000 on average for those claims. So we took that $170,000, applied it to the urgent calls alone that we took in 2020, and uh, made this estimate of $15.5 million. Now, that doesn't take into account all of the recommendations that were made, the assessments, the other calls that weren't considered urgent, but where we gave advice on demand. Um, or any of our risk tips and tools and videos, we're just looking at those calls. So um, here's 2021 uh, overall data. You'll see that we took fewer calls, but the uh, hours were more. We applied that same $170,000 per urgent call only and ended up saving our uh, partners $26.8 million in 2021. Now, I would love, it's almost twice what we did in the prior year. I wish the revenue was almost twice, but I will say that, that we are making a huge impact on the loss ratios of our partners. And again, social media post, most popular of all time was about the helpline. And, um, and you'll see in 2020, I'm actually gonna go back, about 28% of the calls uh, required 30 minutes or more. And as you see in 2021, 95% of the calls that we got required uh, 30 minutes or more. And then, you know, twice the uh, urgency as well. So here are the topics that people called about. The first thing uh, I want you to look at is 2020. Uh, you'll notice that infection control and contamination, that's the pandemic, that was our bucket where uh, COVID calls uh, go into that. 
And then the second most popular call was other, meaning we didn't really have a category for that. We just had to help with it. Um, and then the incident event management. Um, so that was the top three reasons for uh, calls and uh, engaging our helpline in 2020. But look at 2021. So infection control and contamination is at the bottom of the list. It was actually new procedures and risk exposures that topped the list in 2021. And look at this as well. Underneath that is underwriter consults. So underwriters call us all the time with questions about what is this procedure? What should we be looking for? Um, can you review you know, this, this facility before we even consider writing it? Um, or you know, can you give us an opinion on this type of uh, treatment? Except so that uh, was the second most popular. So what does this say? It says that everything's changing. Healthcare is changing. How we provide care is changing. Where we provide cha uh, care is changing, and who's providing that care is changing. So all kinds of new settings and procedures and risk exposures. In fact, a number of uh, clinicians would call or facilities would call and ask about what should they put in an informed consent related to a new procedure they're doing. And our question would be, does your insurance carrier know that you are doing this new procedure? Um, and is it part of you know, what you're covered for? Um, and oftentimes that led to a, dish, you know, a call to their agent, to their carrier to um, increase or add to their coverage. So um, new procedures and new risk exposures. Uh, notice too that abuse, violence, and sexual misconduct hit the list here. And while it's not a frequency leader, um, those calls that we took were quite severe. And our plan in 2022 is to uh, address sexual abuse and misconduct through risk management tools, checklists, recommendations, videos, new guidelines. We really feel like this is an area where we can make a big difference if we just have the right systems in place. And as evidenced by the calls, the claims, the things that we've all seen, the systems are not in place. We're a little behind the times there and we need to, to uh, work a little harder to protect the vulnerable people who are uh, in our facilities. So um, that is what we saw in 2020 and 2021.